in most Asian society, including my country and your country. Unfortunately, our elite are educated in the best, and they adopt. Let's talk about my country first, because in the last hundred and since, since the mid 19th century up to now, so more than 170 years, we blindly follow Western way of thinking through education. We send our elite to be educated in the West, you know, start with the sons of the kings, went to Eton, went to Oxford, Cambridge, and then these people come back to run the country, you know, during the mid 19th century onward, and have played quite important role in negotiating with the West so that we are not you know, completely colonized. Economically, we are colonized, definitely. Different kind of colonization. Yeah, yeah. But then this elite, they went abroad when they were young. Mm -hmm. So when they came back, they don't understand their root, and they want to follow Western path. And then, this is up until the Second World War. And after that, then we got the American influence. More or less, you know, it's a new kind of imperialism that dominate our country heavily. Again, we send our elite. Now it's not only the sons and the relatives of the kings and queens, but now it's the Ordinary commoner, like the merchants, like the military people, like you know, uh, government officers, their son and daughter went abroad, and then they came back again, become the elite, become a technocrat, become lecturer in university, become teachers. So these are people who are adopted Western idea without critical awareness. Very few have critical awareness of what is the good and bad side of Western education. More, most of us are wholeheartedly, most of my teachers are wholeheartedly embrace Western education. So the, the drawback of this kind of educations from my point of view. Number one, this is part of the Western way of thinking. The whole mindset is human need to conquer nature. Uh, believe in progress in terms of science and technology. And this kind of progress is linear. So when they look back at our ancestor, this is all bad or obsolete. So we have to move forward into the future. And if you live in Bangkok, you are better than people in Chiang Mai. If you live in Chiang Mai, you are better than people in Om Khoi. If you in the, the small town Om Khoi, you are better than people who live in the forest. So this kind of linear progress belief also really harmful for me. The third aspect of this weakness of this Western education is individualism. I mean, this is part of modernization where individual become the pillar of all the political philosopher, philosophy, mm. modern political philosophy, both liberal, socialist, and even the social democrat. Everything is centered around the individual. So this promotion of individualism, when it go further and further to the extreme, 
So it's become very selfish kind of individual. On top of that, also come with competition. And you know, if you don't compete, you are left behind. So you have to compete so that compete will encourage technological development, economic, economic growth, etc. etc. Which is some fact in that. But when it goes to extreme, people are not happy when you have to compete from kindergarten yeah. you know, until university. And my country maybe not extreme as Singapore or Japan, but on the way, on the way, a lot of young people get depressed, commit suicide because of this system of competition in education. I think these are, you know, conquering nature, belief in linear progress, individualism, competitions, and materialism. You know, the, the basic idea of modernization is materialism. He saw the whole universe as material stuff. Unlike our ancestor, who we saw split in the tree, you know, split into a, in the river, the mountain, we, we saw our ancestor worldview is nature is a living being not a dead material that we can ex we should exploit or we can exploit. So it's very different, you know. For example, when the current people want to use the water, they ask permission to use the water. Because the water belongs to the whole cosmos. It doesn't belong to human being alone. So this kind of worldview we lost and replaced by this Materialism. I think these are a few weaknesses of modern education that promote this sort of value. You know, I first went to Myanmar in 1994 and that remind me of my childhood because many things we lost through modernization at the time Myanmar still have it. I went to first to Michina and you know, the Michina is so beautiful town. The whole town have two cars from the Second World War. <laughs> Otherwise or bicycle. You know, big big huge trees. So I feel that's quite a living society and people are still very much living in community. You know, this sort of thing I saw in 1994 and people are quite proud of themselves, have strong self-respect. Whether you are Burma or Karen or Kachin, they all feel, you know, proud of themselves. They have their own dresses, the lungi everywhere, you know. The temple and the church are packed on the, you know, religious holidays. So it's, for me, I don't want to romanticize, you know, the, the that kind of situation. But number one, spirituality is still there. People still have belief. You know, unlike Bangkokian, who don't have any more belief. People still live in community. Unlike Bangkokian, who you live next door to each other, you don't know each other. You barely talk to each other. That's that kind of Bangkok you should learn. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I mean, in a way, most people are in your country at that time, they are live a simple life. From the World Bank, technocrat, they may say this is poor people. They don't spend 
they, they spend less than one dollar, two dollar a day. <laughs> but why need to spend money? Because they they Everything. can get fish. Everything. They can get vegetable from the field. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. They, they have eggs. If their relative get sick, they sow their cow or goat. And if you don't have goat or cow, your neighbor sold it for you and lend you the money. You know, this sort of thing. The sense of community is so strong. You know, human happiness. You know, if you don't have relationship, even you have a lot of money, you are depressed. You are sad, you know, loneliness. Human being is part of the you know, mammal community. We need community. We need good friends. And when I first went to Burma, that's very strong. At the time, you know, 1994, we gone through this uprooting process. Thai society went through the uprooting process for nearly 100 years. And we lost so much of those, including we lost the spirituality of Buddhism as well. We have big temple, we have fancy building, the monk live like in the palace. The Buddha left the palace to be the beggar, but the monk now lives like in the palace. It's, it doesn't have any spirituality. That's the religion, but no spirituality. Only very few monks living in the forest, the forest traditions, to keep the spirit ongoing. They are very important. But comparatively, they are the minority in my country. At least in your country, we have a lot of lineage of teachers, yeah. of meditation, you know. You may not like the 50 years of crossing the country, <laughs> but it has pro and con, yeah. you know, this crossing the country. And your ancestors, not stupid, they think carefully. But unfortunately, you know, you're under this Burmese chauvinistic attitude encouraged by the military to keep people in, under control and make divide and rule so that the minorities become the second class citizen. I think that's the drawback you know, of society like Myanmar. But in other aspects, we are a really rich country. Much richer than... We are the same climate, you know. We used to be really rich. But now our river is poisoned with some <laughs> chemical. Our forests were cut. And all these other things happening. So we are... In a way, Thai people are very unlucky. We have been uprooted. We no longer proud. Have a deep self-respect, self-esteem. We become arrogant. We become shallowly confident. But deeply, we don't feel we are good enough. We want to follow the West. Follow Japan, now follow China, you know. You can't be yourself, you have to catch up with others all the time. Where is happiness? No, no. When you talk about education, yeah, you can also define yeah, from this is, what does it mean? Yeah, this kind of education we adopt from the West. It's a kind of mental colonization. It makes you feel who you are is not good enough. You have to do with someone else. You have to have something else. What you have is not enough. Who you are is not good enough. You have to be someone else. And this approaching This kind of education we adopt from the West is a kind of mental colonization. It makes you feel who you are is not good enough. You have to do with someone else. You have to have something else. What you have is not enough. 
Who you are is not good enough. You have to be someone else. And this uprooting, it is at least in my country, that how rural people are not proud of being a farmer. So they left the farm, become the workers, become, if they are more fortunate, they become the white collar, working in the bank, in the, you know, yeah, in the government offices, etc., etc. So education in this way is a kind of uprooting process that make people alienated from their own group. And during the past 50 years, of course, there are, the country is ex expanding, industrializing, so we need you know, this kind of middle class work clerks, you know, working in different company, working in the office, or super clerk like university teachers, you know. These are one reason of education. But when you think of the future, many of the clerk work will be replaced by AI. So the role of university in the past doesn't, doesn't give a promising future because you're educated and you have no job because AI is working for you. Just example in my country, a lot, lots of people are laid off from the bank, you know, Bank used to be very secure work, but no longer. You know, my wife working in the high definition airline, mm -hmm. now it nearly went bankrupt. Just renew again, slowly, you know. So the university used to function as a producing technocrat, clerk, clerk for uh, different companies, government offices, but less and less, they will be needed. So if we still keep this higher education ongoing, it have to be different kind of higher education. The knowledge that used to be very difficult to find, now you can find in your, in your bedroom. You turn on, you can listen to the Harvard lecture, you know. My concern though talk about justice. Very popular in the US. Now everyone can listen to him. So the function of the university is changing dramatically. And for the sustainable future, I think we have to rethink education a lot. I think Schumacher E.F. Schumacher idea about two kinds of knowledge is very important. So far, most universities give the kind of technical knowledge, you know, the what he call convergent knowledge. <clears throat> knowledge that can accumulate, that can uh, develop further and further without end, you know, from computer, AI and now you can create what you call uh, artificial sun. Artificial sun. Oh. You know, <laughs> you have the sun and the moon, now they can create artificial sun. <laughs> and that will have dramatic change of all the technology that we are using now. At least they are partially successful in China now. So this kind of knowledge is make your life more convenient. It can be harmful, it can be helpful. Like we now realize that the fossil energy is very harmful. That's why we have global warming. But it can be helpful, you know. I'm surviving 
now because of the modern operation, most surgery that you know can cut part of my colon that have cancer out, and I'm still talking to you now. Otherwise, I will be gone <laughs> since last year. However, even you can have operation and survive, it's different from the knowledge that makes you happy. The more knowledge that nourish your relationship with your family, with your friends, with your relative, is a different kind of knowledge. Yeah. And that kind of knowledge is not really teaching in the university at the moment. You know, our Buddhist society, the monastery used to be functioning of this kind of education yeah. you know people learn to cultivate themselves learn to understand meaning of life and care for deeper relationship so if university is to survive in the next century it function have to change it's no longer a higher vocational training center as it has been in the past. It has to have a strong, strong spiritual dimension mm -hmm. and strong ecological dimension. I mean, in the past 500 years, you know, slowly we're destroying the, the, the planet Earth. <laughs> now, how to restore it? Yeah. I think this is where university have to be actively. And what about the old server? People who just got their MBA or PhD are the key people who destroy the earth. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not the other people. Yes, exactly, exactly. In my country, <laughs> we, we need a different kind of education that give different kind of mindset to our younger generation to restore the earth, to restore community, restore family. Human happiness doesn't yeah. only depends on convenience. Of course, some of the modern technology is helpful, but we need a critical selection. But the basic, more important aspect of education is this kind of education we have a long time ago. Perennial, it never dies, you know. Self cultivation, knowing yourself, you know, develop compassion, reduce your self centeredness, you know, reduce your ego. If you know, have any meaning in the future, you have to do this function. These two functions first, spirituality, secondly, ecological. Self-cultivation, mm -hmm. meditation practice, yeah. you know, the zebra, the train yourself to restrain yourself from harming yourself and others. Mm -hmm. and to... Yeah, and then meditation develop your strength of your mind, quality of your mind, mm -hmm. and then cultivate your wisdom. You know, understand life beyond self there are much more in life beyond self <clears throat> this is what i mean by spirituality yeah. and this is not only confined to buddhism i think if you uh, look deeply christianity also have this islam also have this uh, many other religions also have this more or less, strong in one part or strong in other part. I think for the future, we have to differentiate between religion and spirituality. People have to understand the ecosystem much deeper than we have been doing. We have to understand deeply you know, how our action can 
e f f e c t impact. In what I have said so far is more about the content. Yeah. So the method of learning also very important. Yeah. The pedagogy. Yes. In, the, in the past, mostly we learn through lecturing. Yeah. You know, giving lecture. And I think yeah. <laughs> that not education. Mm -hmm. You know, that indoctrination. Yeah. I think education is first of all. We have to learn to make decision. Mm. Making decision is education. The whole aspect of education. Without taking care of these aspects, mm -hmm. you know, other things you talk about meaningless. Mm. <clears throat> And real education is also self cultivation. Without training yourself previously, you don't have any kind of education. So, training yourself in terms of developing your meditation, training yourself in terms of uh, restraining yourself from harming yourself and others, you know, developing the non-self perspective. Of life, yeah. this is this you need a deep self cultivation. Other people cannot impose that on you. You cannot be indoctrinated. You cannot be brainwashed to do this sort of deeper self understanding. That's why communism failed. <coughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> They lack this aspect of education. In other words, you need to have to be a community. Oh, to be a community. What should not, kind of should not be to be? Everyone should know everyone else in the university. You should have a lot of small, small university, not a huge one. Decentralize, and everyone know everyone else. The number of students not should not be too big. A few hundred at most, so that a real relationship can develop, can be cultivated, like a village. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you should be like a village, and also should not. Separate themselves from ordinary life. I think your learning is not only in the campus, but in the community, mm -hmm. in the in the jungle, in the forest as well. Yeah. Like spending time in the forest is so important to understand nature deeply. I see. Like learning should not be limited to the classroom only, and not only the classroom, beyond. not only the the, the campus, but the, the world. As I think, students should be encouraged to travel, explore the world, explore your own country. Most people, most students don't understand their own country. <laughs> don't really see from the village to the palace. <laughs> Singapore is an example of, you know, uprooted community. Mm. <laughs> Materially, they are very successful. Yeah. City is clean, full of technology, etc., etc. But people who live there tell me that this city is soulless. <laughs> and and uh, you know, they learn. In the school, they learn English. Mm -hmm. They don't learn Chinese. They don't learn Malay. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't learn Hindi. This is really uprooting. You know, if you don't know, if you are Chinese and you don't know Chinese language, you lost your root. 
you become someone uprooted. By traveling, you know, different cultures in your own countries, mm -hmm. different subcultures, mm -hmm. you learn the ecosystem, yeah. you know, by traveling. And you learn how to be human. Traveling is important for young people. Especially traveling like pilgrimage, you know, not like tourists. Mm -hmm. If you are a tourist, you learn nothing. You learn only what people want to show you, but you are pilgrimage, you know. You walk on foot from Noi Ko to Yangon, you learn so much. All the way to Pogo to the sea, you know, you learn so much. <laughs> Biking is also important. You can help organize Southeast Asian bike. Before COVID, we plan to bike. China, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, yeah. Thai, Burma, you know, make a circle. Mekong Regional Bike. Yes, <laughs> Mekong Regional Bike. Mm. Starting from Shangri-La. From China. Mm. Yeah, Shangri-La, the, the, where Big River came from there, you know. Mm. Yangtze, Ilapadi, Salawin, Pramabutra, mm. you know. country as well in my country. Though we have been destroyed so much by modernization, there are still a sustainable living community. More in your country than mine. And we should learn from them. Instead of learning from New York or London, we learn from these villages in the forest. And our sustainability is not forest without people. Forest, you can live together yeah. harmoniously. Yeah. In my country, you know, Korean people, they live in that forest for hundreds of years. Yeah. And the government declared as a great natural forest. They live there for hundreds of years. <laughs> and the government want to kick them out. Yeah. This, is, this is a bad idea, you know, yeah. learning from, from America. The people cannot live in the forest. This is terrible. Yeah. Indigenous people everywhere live in the forest, yeah. and that harmony relationship between human and for and, and, and environment that is sustainability. Sustainability is not only nature without human being. Yeah. Human being, bird, snakes, everything yeah. have to be together. Yeah. You know, have to live together. Yeah. I think this is instead of looking always looking from outside yeah. or looking from the west, we looking inside our society, our neighboring countries. Lots of good practice. Good point. Mm. When we talk about sustainable, it's not only ecology, human being as well, animal as well. Mm. We have to live together. And big areas develop technology that doesn't harm. I think for the future, the first thing that when they graduated, they should be able to earn their living without being employed. Because employment will be less and less. How can you live without employment? <laughs> Very <laughs> challenging. Yes! Yeah. Yes! You see, it's a place that you have to learn how to make a good living. Secondly, your living have to be in harmony with nature. You know, sensitive about what you eat, what you use, you know, what you throw away. Maybe any plastic should not be thrown into the garbage. Our graduates have to understand the structure of the society systematically. Able to know why China is fighting with America. 
why the war of hegemony is ongoing. Because their dispute affect us, you know, in the village as well. So we have to understand the world and understand our own society, our own history. Why Burmese become so chauvinistic? But it's our weakness. Why? Yeah. It's a very different. Why there's a civil war going on for 60 years? New generation have to understand that, have to go beyond their parents' pattern of thinking. Understand the accurate, delicate, ecological system. Mm. Why this season the fish have insect a lot to eat? How they related to the moon, the sun, the star? You know, all these interrelated. We are breathing the air of the dinosaur. You know. Billions of years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, this sis natural system we need to understand mm. deeply and appreciate it. Yeah. Unlike our ancestors, our ancestors don't need to understand it because they they respect it. Mm. You know, they don't destroy it easily. My research is also yeah, looking at the Myanmar context and how Myanmar society want to see our sustainable future and how ESD, education for sustainable development, can be integrated in the reconstruction of our um, let's go like new university. Yes, exactly, exactly in Myanmar. And our we student. can't copy all the UNESCO guidelines and things <laughs> no. from the West. Yeah, that's why I try to explore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like your point that we also need to look at some village communities in the forest. Yes. In Shan's Bay. Yes, yes. They have been living in a harmoniously sustainable yes, way yes, with yes. nature. Yeah. And also, I think our graduates need to understand themselves, know themselves deeply. Mm -hmm. What they are good at. You know, some may be good at uh, being a, starting some pioneer stuff. Mm. Some may be good at being a politician to change the structure of the society. Some may be good at the civil servants that you can serve. You know, yeah. some may be good at mer being merchants, being traders. Some may be good at agriculture. You know, but all need to work together to change for sustainability but the knowledge where you belong you know in the universe has to be very clear not only going up to the top you know of the social ladder is useless you, know? you don't need to go to the top to be happy <laughs> to be valuable <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Ka. <laughs> Most welcome. That was a lot. I hope it is helpful. Yeah, it is very helpful. Maybe find out proof editing can be Jane. <laughs> My Aja. <laughs> She's very <laughs> smart in editing. <laughs>